Here, tell these people something they don't know about me. Welcome, esteemed colleagues. Today we're going to discuss an important and often acute condition encountered in gastroenterology in the emergency department, food bolus impaction. This condition, characterized by the lodging of a food bolus in the esophagus, presents a unique challenge in diagnosis and management. Now, food bolus impaction occurs when a mass of ingested food becomes lodged in the esophagus leading to dysphagia, or difficulty swallowing, or odynophagia, painful swallowing, or complete obstruction. It's most common in patients with pre-existing esophageal disorders, such as eosinophilic esophagitis, or esophageal strictures, or rings. Now, several factors can predispose individuals to food bolus impaction, including anatomical abnormalities such as strictures, rings, webs, or motility disorders such as achalasia or scleroderma, even inflammatory conditions like eosinophilic esophagitis, and obviously behavioral factors such as rapid eating and insufficient chewing. Now, patients typically present with sudden onset dysphagia, or difficulty with swallowing, often with a clear history of ingesting a large piece of food or eating hastily. They may also exhibit distress, drooling, and an inability to tolerate secretions. The initial assessment includes a thorough history and physical exam. Key diagnostic tools include endoscopy the gold standard for diagnosis, allowing direct visualization, removal of the impaction, and evaluation for underlying pathology. Now, regarding imaging, plain radiographs or contrast esophagram can be useful in certain cases to assess for obstruction and to exclude perforation. Now the management. The management of food bolus impaction involves both the immediate relief of obstruction and the treatment of any underlying esophageal disease. Initial management deals with ensuring airway protection and stabilization of the patient is paramount. Removal of the food bolus should be performed urgently to prevent complications such as aspiration, perforation, or the development of pressure necrosis. Oftentimes, this removal can be done endoscopically. The most common and effective treatment, typically using a push or pull technique with a variety of endoscopic tools. Care must be taken to avoid mucosal injury. But oftentimes, a gastroenterologist is not right around the corner in the emergency department. So there are some pharmacological interventions that can be initiated. While not a primary treatment, the use of glucagon may be considered to relax the esophageal sphincter and facilitate spontaneous passage of the bolus in select cases. Also, nitrates and calcium channel blockers may also be used. Now, regarding prevention and long-term management, addressing underlying causes is critical to prevent recurrence. This may involve dietary modifications, treatment of eosinophilic esophagitis with steroids, dilation of strictures, or surgical intervention in cases of anatomical abnormalities. Now regarding the complications, complications from food bolus impaction include aspiration pneumonia, esophageal perforation, and mediastinitis. Early recognition and management are key to preventing these serious outcomes. 
Food bolus impaction is a common emergency that requires prompt recognition and intervention. A thorough understanding of its etiology, clinical presentation, and management strategies is essential for all healthcare professionals, especially in the emergency department. Collaboration between emergency physicians, gastroenterologists, and sometimes surgeons is crucial for optimal patient outcomes. So, after this lecture, you definitely be prepared for the next patient that chokes. Can't say the same in any rap battle, though. Can't save everybody. As always, keep your head up. You're doing great. You're better than what you were yesterday. And that's a lot. Learn something new today. Going to be a great doc. Sometimes you just got to hear that. <laughs>